Welcome to Dread No Mondays, Kenny Ingersoll, and today I'm here with Justin Maxwell. Justin, I appreciate you taking the time to be here and um, take time to be on the show. Um, thank you for being with us and taking the time out of your day to do so. Yeah, I'm really grateful for the opportunity, Kenny. I'm excited to be here, excited to hopefully give some value to your listeners and hopefully help them to find and uh, develop a purpose and see if we can't push them into new heights in their lives and their careers, their business, see if we can't get some value to them. Awesome. And we're looking forward to it. I'm excited for this one. Um, you, you just mentioned value and whatnot and um, driving to a higher purpose. Um, dig a little deeper on that, if you will. What were some of the higher purposes or what helped you find that higher purpose, you know, when overcoming your, your Monday, whatever, that was for you um yeah so for me i think it's it's important for you to your listeners to understand a little bit about my my story so i i am not so i am an entrepreneur now but i was not an entrepreneur i never even had the idea of being an entrepreneur i was in the mindset of i'm going to be a school teacher i'm going to go to school i'm going to be a school teacher i'm going to teach i'm going to be a teacher for a long time and then i'm going to retire and just move into that that lifestyle but um, one of the jobs, one of the jobs I had after college, so I, I got my undergraduate, I got my master's degree. And one of the jobs I got right out of college was a, a school called Athos Academy. And this, and just, I'm not just like a classroom teacher. I'm a physical, I was a physical education teacher. And one of the people that I met there that was over like the athletic coaches, the, the PE coaches, he really was not just about like the typical PE culture, culture type of a situation where roll the ball out or just kind of hang out. There's really no progress. No one's watching PE teachers. So there's really no like professional development that's occurring. That's actually beneficial to them. That's pushing them to improve themselves, but he was different. And so he was my, my supervisor per se, I guess you could call him, but he was pushing me on a daily basis to learn as much as I possibly could about coaching to, to dive into like the methodologies of movement and how to move and how to live. And that like, that pushing, that excitement that he gave me was like a push off of a cliff, essentially, to like just start learning as much as I possibly could about the world and not just get stuck into, I have to be a PE teacher, I'm just going to be, like just kind of roll along with life and just let life happen to me. But instead, it shifted my mindset into, I'm going to take action in my life and I'm going to learn as much as I possibly can. And all it took for me to get that was a mentor. Essentially, he's my mentor. And he gave me not assignments because I wasn't like I was, he was like assigning them for like, you're going to do this or you get fired. It was just like, hey, have you checked out this article? Have you read this? Have you looked at this type of movement? Have you looked at the way this is done? And it was just like questions that he was asking me that I had to find the answer for that sparked this investigational piece in my heart that like just drove me to learning more, not just about physical education, but about finance and about the world, about money about taxes, about real estate, like it just snowballed into all sorts of stuff. So I think for me that the ignition point when it came to finding my purpose, like what I was looking to do, it was a mentor that asked me questions and didn't assign me, but was trying to push me just a little bit further by asking me questions and getting me to dig deep into a subject so that I could learn more about it and improve my coaching and be the best person slash coach that I possibly could. That's awesome. That's <clears throat> That's uh, what, what it took for me is someone just to essentially, you know, um, metaphorically kick me off a cliff and say, go figure it out. You know, yeah. give me that guidance and stuff, but give me that push as well. Um, what, what were your, your thoughts or what kept you, I guess, from when, they, when your mentor pushed you and challenged you and you realized you weren't going to stay in that path of, you know, be a PDT teacher and this is what I'm going to do or blah, blah, blah. Um, what kept you from being an ostrich and burying your head in the sand and going out and finding that stuff? You know, what we, cause I know a lot of, a lot of times our first reaction is to crawl in a, a hole and hide and, you know, it's a scary world out there or whatever, you know? Um, I think, I think for me, I like, so I had had a job previous in another school as a PE teacher and I, I felt very alone there and I didn't have any guidance from administration or principals. It was just all me. Like I could have been a terrible teacher and no one would have known. Like they wouldn't have cared if I just 
did no teaching at all, like they wouldn't have given, like they didn't care. When I came here, like when someone took that initiative to like just reach out, like, hey, let's try and push and improve our teaching, our coaching, like that like really excited me. And so I think like I didn't have the opportunity to because I kind of, like, I had experienced that other side of like no pushing, no nothing and just me hanging out. And I didn't necessarily like that. That doesn't really fit who I am, who I was previously because I always liked learning. And I always liked like trying to push myself to the best, but when I didn't have that and like there was no progress, I, I felt dead, I guess you could say. And then when I had that mentor push me, like it was almost an excitement, a jolt. I was like, wow, this is really cool. And then the things I was learning just compounded because I was like, wow, this, there's so much more to this than the majority of PE teachers even think about. There's so much more that we can be providing to our students to get them moving and happy and having fun and enjoying this versus just like guessing and doing this, like there's a science behind this. It was just like excited me. So I didn't really have to experience that fear per se. I know that might seem a little bit backwards, but that was my experience. And that, that's, that's important too. You know, it's amazing what a difference it is to have that, that structure, that support with you, behind you, you know, um, in that progress. Because you know, like you said, um, you could have been a, a horrible teacher and no one would have known or cared, you know, and, <clears throat> and you, you wouldn't have cared as long as you got your paycheck, essentially. Right. You know, but, but you felt that, that um, hole in your, with, in your potential or whatever. That right. And I think it's still. I think it comes down just thinking about it as we're, we're speaking, it comes down a little bit to vision. Like, so I didn't have a vision of what I wanted or what I could become as a physical education teacher because I didn't know what was out there. Like all my experience had been like, no administration cares about you. You can just kind of do whatever you want. So you can be good if you want to, or you can do be crap if you want to, no one's going to really care. But when this mentor comes and he provides a vision for, Hey, this is what you can be. This is the type of teacher you can be. This is the type of coach you can be. And like giving me a vision of what it could be that like sparked my excitement. And so like, because I couldn't see it before, someone else pointed out to me really helped. So some people I think in life have that vision just like automatically there. They know what they want. They know what it looks like. But I think for other people, including myself, we might need someone to come in and give us a vision to show us like, hey, this is your potential. This is what can happen if you run with this. this is the if you're running with this information, if you're learning about this, if you're improving your skills, this is where you can get to. And if, so, if that, that someone else providing that, I think sparks your vision and puts it in your mind so that you can reach it. Exactly. And I've experienced that myself. You know, you're um, using the analogy of a, a flashlight. You got a little dollar flashlight from Walmart and you can only see three feet in front of you as your vision. But then someone comes with a, a huge, high powered, professional grade one. And then, then that opens up. You're like, oh my gosh. I can, I can do that. That's out there. You know, it's just right. awesome. And then you in turn want to go share it with people as well and, you know, get them to see that, to see what you see or to feel what you feel. <clears throat> right. No, yeah, you that's know. a, that's a great analogy. I love that. Thank you for sharing that with that. And it's, and it's amazing how that not intentionally all the time, but kind of becomes your purpose as well when we talk about finding your purpose is, you know, something inside you wants to help others see and experience what you now see and experience, you know, so that kind of becomes a built in feature that you want that, you know, whether that's your, your family, friends, whatever, it's kind of, kind of awesome how it all ties together. Yeah. Yeah. I think having that vision definitely drives your purpose because now you're driving towards something, you know, what you're trying to get to. So you're, you're motivated on a daily basis. Like I have to do this, 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 this in, in order for me to get there or else I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to reach my vision that I now can see. And so that helps provide that drive every, every day to get up and get after it and, and get there. So you can reach that part that you now can see because it's been illuminated to you. Let, let's talk a minute for about, um, reaching that that purpose or you know fulfilling some of that purpose um and specifically you know a lot of times when you think people think of their purpose or whatever they think of that's that's what they're supposed to do that's what their career is supposed to be their profession whatever 
but something that's just recently, you know, in the last couple of years has been opened to my eyes is how your profession could be over here, but your purpose could be over here, but it's your profession that allows you to fulfill that purpose. You know, so some, sometimes that might be the scenario, you know, your, your profession might be a school teacher. Let's just use that. But your purpose is um, planting trees after a wildfire. Right. Like throwing out an example. Right. You know, so a lot of people don't, don't piece those together. You know, so if, if you wouldn't mind talking about how you can open up that and make sure, you know, see how it ties together or how you are able to see that and not like single vision, you know, your purpose has to be over here in tie with your, um, or just things like that. If that makes yeah. sense. <laughs> so I like that because that, that kind of fits in pretty well with what we do with at my company right now. We help people with um, wealth creation and wealth protection and saving on taxes. But one of the things that we help people understand is what we call the wealth hierarchy. So we have a, a pyramid. So we have a base of the pyramid. And on that base is your career. And like you have to have a solid career that you enjoy, that's funding, that, that makes you have enough money so that you're saving, so that you're enjoying life and being able to provide for your family, right? Uh, there's other things we have on there, but on the top of the pyramid, we have what we call self-expression projects. And so once you have that foundation centered where, you're, where you have a career that's solid, you're saving money, you've, you're ho owning a home, you're putting your money in a safe place that's growing exponentially, you've established a nice foundation, then you can move on to this other part where you don't have to worry about it because you know your finances are in place and you can go fulfill your purpose. Like you can go a little bit out of your way. You can spend time on it because you're not focused on skimping and saving and making every little penny count because you're still focused on your foundation. So your foundation is set, which then allows you or enables you to go out and do whatever you want to do to fulfill that purpose. Whatever fulfills you as a human, I think is really important for you to do to reach. And then that could make you money or it could just be like your example with the planting trees, like something that makes you feel good, something that makes you feel a part of the world, a part of society. And so I think you're, you're dead on with that. It doesn't have to be your career. It can be something completely different. Thank you. That, that's awesome. It's, <clears throat> it's often like kind of overlooked or people run too fast or faster than their feet can carry them. They don't build that foundation, you know, to, to properly fulfill that purpose. Um, um, another example I'll bring up is um, I'm a big Grant Cardone fan, and in, and he often talks about if you go on vacation, you know, make sure you're you're working, you're busting your butt, so that you can go on a vacation, and it's not a a two day or three day weekend, and you're worried about every penny. You know, make sure your your foundation is built up and then you can go to Paris or Hawaii or whatever for two weeks and not have to think about how much money you spend while you're there or whatever that right. that vacation or activity you do is. Right. And I think that's really important because a lot of people do it backwards. They're trying to fulfill their purpose, see if it's outside of their career and they're trying to do it. But now because they can't, they, ha they haven't built their foundation, like things crumble, they lose their job or it's not consistent enough. And so now they're, they're stressed. They're not able to really truly give their purpose. They're not able to really focus on their vacation because they know that they're going to debt for this vacation. They know that it's going to cause them to have to work harder when they get home. So they're thinking about that versus actually being on vacation, enjoying life and letting that come. So you got to set that foundation. It's really, really vital. Okay. Um, let's go back to mentorship. You know, um, Mentorship, what, what's it like for you? Do you, do you find that uh, in a lot, of, a lot of times from what I've experienced, people think it's kind of a, a one and done. You know, you read this book or you hire this coach for a year or whatever, and then you're good to go. Kind of like after you graduate high school, you're set for life. You know, what's, what's been your experience with mentorship? And you mentioned a little bit how much it's opened your vision and whatnot, do um, you continually seek mentorship um, to improve yourself? How, how does that tie into finding your purpose and on your yeah. path to your purpose? 
Yeah, I think I think you now that I've seen the power of a good mentor, like it encourages me to start being a mentor too. But I think you should always be seeking someone that's a little bit farther on the path than you, so they can light that light, like your analogy earlier, so they can show you the next picture of what's now possible now that you've reached that point. So you're always looking for someone that's one or two or three steps ahead of you to bring you up to where they are, and then you're just constantly doing it. And they might always be one or two or three steps, so they can always be your mentor, but maybe you end up passing them and you have to go look for someone else. But I, I think it's really important to always have at least someone that has a vision of where you want to be, and they're gonna help you get there. Thank you, exactly. And I like how you, how you pointed out that you may end up outgrowing your mentor, your current mentor, or um, future mentor, you may end up outgrowing them. You know, and it's, it's important to remember and make sure that they're still um, helping you with that, you know. Um, <clears throat> and then, and then, yeah, making, I think at the beginning of your journey, you, you can have kind of a, a generic mentor, not to put titles on anyone, but you know, this person is good at your vision, but then as you continue on, you want to get like more specific and deeper as you go up that path or whatever. Um, so I think, I think that's important. And I'm glad that you pointed that out as well. That you yeah, might I think have. Yeah, I, th I think it's important to like, cause not every mentor is going to be the best at everything in life. Like you'd have a mentor that's fabulous at finances and taxes, but they suck at their health. So you would want, you don't want to follow their path on health, but you have someone else that's helping you and mentoring you on like, what, what's the food you should be and how much exercise you should be doing, how, what kind of daily routine you should be doing. Then maybe you have someone else for your marriage, your relationship. So not, you don't have to look for one mentor to be the be, end all be all. Like you can have different people for different classifications of your life. Exactly. That's, that's so important that people, people understand that, you know, or, um, that they realize that your your buddy Joe may not be the best marriage mechan or marriage mentor when he's never been married or divorced three times or right. you know, so exactly. long what you were saying, you know, and then and also I um, it's important that people, you know, not question the mentor you know, as, as far as their capability, you know, of course, make sure they're, they're a good mentor, but, you know, dig deeper, you know, ask questions to get to where you want to go, you know, um, you know, don't just, don't just sit back if you're not where you want to be, you know, ask them, okay, well, I want to be here, or what about this specifically, or what about this specifically over here, you know, get specifics. You know, when you get to that point, making sure you're asking and, you know, um, really digging deep to, to fine tune as you go along. Yeah. Um, or make those small course corrections during your path, whatever that path may be, finance, fitness, whatever. <clears throat> right. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I think it's really important to... Uh, to not be afraid to receive feedback because I think sometimes like you're going to be doing things that just aren't the best for you in whatever it is. Like it could be your job or your health or fitness and someone's going to call you out. Don't, it's good to be not offended by the mentor or anyone else. Just take it as that's their perspective, digest it and see if it applies to you, see if they can learn from it, make changes from it. And then if you need to make those changes. Exactly. You know, and <clears throat> your, your vision today might change so those those questions those changes will be different those tweaks may be different five years from now that you can't see today right um, sorry but also with finding your purpose and stuff what were what were some of the biggest challenges that you've you've come across well let me back up a little bit. You mentioned going to the school teacher. What what helped you again having that mentorship? But what helped you jump? What helped you also, you know, become an entrepreneur versus staying in the path of having a job? Yeah. So I 
like like I had said, I had that job previously where I was kind of just like, I don't even know if I want to teach anymore. I found this new job. I found this mentor. He started teaching me all sorts of stuff. I really was passionate about it. But then I did end up hitting another wall where it was like, financially, I just don't know if I can provide for my family enough. That we can survive, but we're not going to like live and enjoy life fully. I need to look for something else. I need to be driving and, and seeing if I can't make more money for my family, either a side hustle or bring something else in. And so I purchased real estate education classes. I purchased classes on taxes. I purchased classes on retirement accounts. I purchased classes on like money management and wealth creation. And I just dove into to finance and like to figure out ways so that I could bring enough value to the world so that money could come start coming back to me. And my, my biggest challenge with that was, is I had no idea how to be an entrepreneur. I had zero idea on like what it took to go out and, and raise money or get people to trust you to be a salesman because like that was never on my radar to like make that a skill of mine. So the biggest challenge for me was failing a lot and having lots of disappointment and like not having real estate deals go through and, and not having it, like not having success in my sales and just seeing myself not making success on like that end. But that, that effort I was putting in was a ton of success. I was changing. I was becoming a better person. I was adapting. And I, I started like doing morning routines and making sure I was hitting those really hard and including exercise and reading spiritual scripture for me and making sure I was meditating, like all of that, like it just slowly was happening day after day. Like sometimes I fail and sometimes I wouldn't. And it just slowly became pushing towards this entrepreneurship. And so that was the biggest challenge for me, I think, was is I had no idea how to do it. I guess the skills to do it, because it does take some skills that you have to learn and teach yourself. You can't, they're not just taught to you in school per se. Thank you. I, I think there were, were two things you brought up that I want to touch on a little more. Um, the, the first one is that you, you started. You know, you didn't know exactly how it would turn out. You didn't know where where it would lead exactly. You know, um, another analogy, going on a road trip, you didn't know if there was a, a car accident or if all the lights were green or things like that, but you started anyways. And I think that's vital, you know, for people to just take that first step and then take the next step. And the second thing you brought up is um, through these failures and things that fell through, the real estate deals that didn't happen and whatnot, you mentioned that you you saw that you were improving and making positive changes, you know, in your mindset and physical and finance and other things like that. What helped you recognize that? You know, so it kind of actually kind of goes back to my school because like one of the big things that school that with the mentor I was talking about, they, uh, they're huge on teaching people, the kids specifically growth mindset. So like your end result is not who you are. Like what is, what your output is, it's that process that you're putting in to get that result is what you should be enjoying, what you should be examining. And so I really took that mindset to heart from Carol Dweck, like that, that research, that, uh, that, that, that lessens um, the scarcity mindset or the, the closed off mindset versus the growth mindset. And so I really took that off before I even went on the entrepreneurial journey. And so I think that was a big blessing for me because I knew that my outcomes weren't producing anything like to the world, but that process of all the things I was doing to get there, the calls I was making, the things I was reading, the things I was digesting, the, the steps I was taking, I saw that those were successful steps I should be taking. And it was eventually going to produce the result. I just had to keep tweaking the stuff to get there. Thank you. That's very vital. There's a lot of people, they'll see the failures and that's all they'll see. Or that's all they'll focus on when they're not recognizing the changes, the successes they're having within themselves, whether that's mindset or whatever the case may be. You know, they don't recognize those small wins, those small positive tweaks. You know, and sometimes it takes um, someone else pointing it out. Um, one thing I've I've heard many people do is they'll they'll keep a timeline on themselves. You know, and you know, today I'm at point A. You know, and tomorrow this happened. Well, not tomorrow, but. Oh, this day this happened, this day I did this, and then five years from now, whatever, 
they can look back at that and see those small changes and go, wow, I'm, I made more difference than I realized, you know, or th that's something they can visualize as well. But it's important that people recognize that and understand that, you know, they're the small wins. <clears throat> Yeah, and if, if your listeners are curious, like, how do you develop that? I think it just comes down to learning about it, like learning what a growth mindset is, learning what an abundance mindset is, and it's like learning about it, and then just just try and catch yourself when you're not thinking that, that way. I think that really helps. Like, when you start noticing yourself, like, oh, that sucks, I'm a, I'm a failure, I didn't succeed there, but then, like, you got to put a stop on that thought. No, I'm not going to go down that way. What progress did I make prior to this outcome? that I had success with. And if I didn't do anything that was proper, like what can I change next time? So you're self-evaluating constantly. So I would really encourage people to just learn as much as they can about growth mindset, abundance mindset, because that's the mindset that's going to take them to their purpose. Perfect. And that's perfect example. Perfect place to start is just start learning about it, what it is, you know, get a better understanding. You know, even if you don't, have that change quite yet you can start learning about it and then you can think about it more and then you'll start thinking that way and like you said you'll get to the point where you'll do a self-evaluation and just put a stop on the negativity and just like nope nope this is what i did you know this happened yes but this also happened you know and because this happened this will be better next time or whatever or I can now see the next step. I can now see the next destination. So thank you for bringing that up. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and we'll have more wrap up questions. What, you mentioned a couple of them. What would, what would like be your number one or what would you suggest to people just starting? You just mentioned you know, reading good books and finding a mentor. What, was that what you would point out or what would you point out specifically or how people could go about that? Like, how, how would you suggest someone find a mentor? So I think uh, I have a few suggestions for people. I think to answer that question, how do you find a mentor? I think you got to put yourself in a position where you're going to find mentors. So whether that's going to networking groups or whether that's just getting out to wherever you wanting to be to find your purpose or to improve your career or to learn something new about things that interest you, get out there and associate with people that are in that field. Like, like for me, when I started with real estate, like I joined a real estate investing group. And so I was constantly associated with people that were in that field. So I could start picking off and talking and having discussions with people to see who was doing this, who was doing that, who was, who was, who is having success, what were they doing, like that type of stuff. I think immersing yourself in the field and with people, I realize that's a little bit difficult right now, but like there's plenty of like virtual groups that same things happening just in a virtual setting where you can start associate with people that are doing that thing that you want to do. So I think that's number one is to find a mentor, start associating with people that fit that build. And then for another one that I think is really valuable is to really crush your morning. Like you need to have a morning routine that's the same every day. Like you're going to wake up at the same time. You're going to do this. You're going to do that. You're going to do this. So like, for example, mine is I wake up, I come downstairs, I have just a kettlebell workout that I like to do. And then I immediately go into meditation. And then I immediately follow that with just like vision, like where I want to be, how I want to do this. And then I follow that up with spiritual scripture study. And then I start my day, then I'll have breakfast and then I'm, I'm off on the rest of my day. So I think crushing your morning is really important because it makes something consistent that you're in charge of, that you're controlling your mind and changing your mindset and giving you the power in within yourself to go act and be the best you can. Awesome. Thank you. Well, that's a lot of great places to start. And if, if that seems, you know, overwhelming at first or you don't have time to just start with one little tweak, you know, um, start getting up at the same time, you know, do five minutes of exercise or five minutes of meditation, you know, just start with one little tweak, um, go read a book, go connect with someone, right? you know, just start, start somewhere, just start little and then be consistent. 
Yeah, I would say if you're if you have if you haven't done any of those things, you don't have a mentor, your your mornings are really bad, and you really are lost when it comes to like knowing what your purpose is. I would say from what I what I've done, just those things that I've done, finding a mentor, reading books, having a good morning. I would just say choose one of those things and get really good at that, and then start once you've got really good at that thing, then add the next thing. Because if you do all those things, try and do everything at once, you can get some people get a little overwhelmed, they can't handle it, and then they just quit, which isn't what we want. So I would just get really good at one thing and then add another thing, get really good at that, and then add another thing. That's that's would be my suggestion. Awesome. Perfect suggestion. I appreciate that. Would you mind if sharing your contact info if people wanted to reach out to you and ask you further or for more advice and whatnot? Or where can yeah. they get a hold of you? Yeah, so I I I I work at a company that we we do uh, it's called Big Life Financial, and it's all about living your best life. So controlling your finances so that you can live and find your purpose and live the best you possibly can. So if you would love to have a conversation with me, the best two ways to get in contact with me is number one through email. So that's Justin M at BigLifeFinancial.com, or you can set up a consultation with me at tax.BigLifeFinancial.com. So those are the best two ways. The, the tax.BigLifeFinancial.com. You just put in your name and then I'll end up calling you and you said that you put a time and that you're available. And then the, um, the email, you can just communicate me with that. If you don't want to have a phone conversation and we can just chat back and forth via email. Awesome. Thank you. Um, that'd be great. Hey, Justin, there's been a lot of great stuff on here. I appreciate you taking the time to do this and sharing your knowledge and experience with us. And um, please reach out to us if you have any questions or want to um, take it to the next step. We can certainly help you with that as well. And um, look forward to seeing you on the next one.